Hello and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 17th of June 2019 and the time has just gone 11.55 British summer time. Uh, to be honest, it's been a fairly quiet and subdued start to the uh, European trading week. Uh, it had a fairly subdued trading session in Asia overnight and that's spilled over uh, to Europe. Um, the same old trade tensions and geopolitical concerns that we had at the back end of last week, trade tensions between the US and China, uh, heightened tensions in relation to Iran, uh, they still persist and they, and they seem to be at a bit of a standstill and they're bubbling away in the background. Um, but seeing as there's been, been essentially no new developments on either of those fronts, uh, we haven't really seen a whole lot of moves uh, in Asian equity indices overnight and same with European indices today. Um, the big announcement of the week would be the Federal Reserve's, um, the Federal Reserve's update on Wednesday, which we'll be talking about more detail um, towards the back end of the video. But essentially, it, it appears to me that we're, we're in a scenario whereby traders are going to be kind of sitting on their hands, uh, potentially between now and Wednesday's update from the Federal Reserve. Uh, so I'll, go, I'll dive straight in and take a look at some of the major equity markets and see how things are going. Uh, in relation to the Federal Reserve, um, there's been a lot of speculation of possibility of uh, the Federal Reserve cutting rates uh, later on this year. And if we are going to have um, rates being cut in July or, 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 you know, or September, the Federal Reserve are going to want to be kind of to lay the foundations for that cut. Uh, on Wednesday's meeting. So traders, it's already high expectations for looser rates at the back end of the year. And quite frankly, if traders don't get that, we could see equity markets uh, move to the downside, uh, or we could see you know a bit of a, another leg higher potentially if, if the Federal Reserve make it clear that they are willing to cut rates towards the back end of this year. So what I'm covering now, uh, I'll be starting off with the, with the FTSE 100 and then the DAX and the Dow Jones and the S&P 500. And you'll see a bit of a common theme here uh, in relation to the 50-day moving average. Um, so the FTSE 100 here managed to create um, a you know you know a multi-month high, a multi-week high uh, only only last week, and the market has been drifting a small bit lower. But you notice that the FTSE 100 is still kind of hovering above this blue line here, which is the 50-day moving average, and that comes into play in a 7,347. And essentially, while the market holds above that metric. The, uh, the, the blue line, the 50 moving average, it's likely that we could see a, a continuation of the wider upper trend that's been in play uh, since basically late December last year. And if we do press on higher from here on the FTSE 100, we could be looking at targeting this year. We're here, um, the highs of late September 2018, and that comes into play at 7,558. But if you do see a move to the downside, uh, support could be found from this yellow line here, the water day moving average, uh, which comes into play at 72.44. Uh, and, and below that, support can be found from the kind of psychologically important 7,200 mark. We did see that region act as support. And it's only really if we have a sizable break below the Trinity moving average, this red line here at 7,158, because then we, we become worried. And that might bring the um, the early June low of 7,079 into play. Um, I'll take a look now at what's going on on the DAX. And to be honest, across the major indices of Europe and the US, it's a fairly similar story. And this is what this is what I mean about um, in terms of keeping an eye on what's going on in the markets. So big picture view, late December uh, until 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 early May, very positive run, quite a sizable sell-off um, on the on, on the DAX. A similar scenario. Uh, what, what do we see here? Like we saw in the FTSE 100, the DAX is holding up, it's just about holding above. This blue line here is 50 day moving average, uh, which comes to the play just south of 12,087. Uh, 12, and if you can hold above that blue line there, it's likely we could see the market press on higher from here. And we could be looking at um, taking out the, the mid May high of 12,318. And beyond that, could take us up toward this region here in around 12,450. Uh, moves to the downside, even if you drift lower, um, the kind of psychologically important 12,000 metric might act as support. And even below that, uh, this is the yellow line here, the water day moving average in uh, 11,755 might act as support. And notice how this red line here, the true day moving average, acts as a decent support. 
um, in early June, and that comes to play just, uh, just around 11,600. If an act has support in the past, it makes it more likely that it will do so in the future. Obviously, there are no guarantees, but if you do manage to take out that level, then that, that could be a sign that this kind of shorter term downward trend uh, is going to continue, and we could see further losses from there. We could be looking at heading back down towards 11,400 or indeed um, 11,270. I'll take a look at what's going on over in the US, starting off with the Dow Jones. You know, you, you, you see kind of a bit of a theme here, a decent rally between late December and up as high as early May. Uh, you know, a lower low, lower high, a sizable rally in the last few weeks, managed to create, you know, multi-week highs, you know, multi-month high, but holding above, again, its 50 moving average, which comes into play at 25,000. 981. If you could hold the ball of this area here, the blue line, the 50 day moving average, it's likely we could see the market press on higher up around the 26,400 mark or up, or up towards uh, 26,700. Uh, even if you do drift lower, uh, support could be found from this yellow line here, the 100 day moving average, uh, which acted as both kind of support and resistance uh, in the last few months, in at uh, 25,823. And even if you drop below that again, it could be heading back down toward this red line, the 20 moving average at 25,417. And if it moved below that, uh, then could, could then potentially point to further losses. Could be looking at retesting uh, the early June lows. And regarding the, uh, the big indices, the last one I'll have up now is the S&P 500. Once again, major rally between late December and late april early 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 may market at a, at a lower low a lower high a lower low but we had quite a steep rally uh, in late may going into early june the highs of june took off the highs of may we're holding above this blue line here the 50 moving average uh, which comes to play at 20 uh, 2873 and while we hold above it it's like it's, it's likely we could press on higher and continue the wider upward trend um, this area here in around 2920 might act as a resistance. We saw some consolidation uh, a few months ago. It might act as a bit of resistance and a boot to the upside. And should we move beyond it, uh, we could be looking at targeting this area here in around 2,958. Um, one of the components of Dow theory uh, is that the industry, you know, the indices must confirm each other. And essentially, while the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, the FTSE 100, and the DAX while they all hold above their 50 day, their respective 50 day moving average, it's more likely that all those markets will continue to move, um, continue the wider upward trend that they've been in. Uh, you can be more confident if you're if you're trading one of those markets and if you're uh, and if you're looking to buy into one of those markets, if one of those markets, if you're looking to buy into it and if you're trading, for example, the S&P 500 and you notice that the other markets, the Dow, the FTSE 100 and the DAX are also above their respective 150 day moving averages. You can then become more confident that the wider indices in the, U in the in Europe and the US are going to press on higher from here. Obviously, there are no guarantees, but it just it just it just makes it more likely that event will happen. Subsequently, should the markets all, all turn over and should they all fall back below their 50 day moving average, then you can then then you then you become become more confident. Then you then you can start to think, well, actually maybe. Maybe global indices are going to turn over again. Maybe they are going to continue the recent, the more, the shorter term downward trend that, that's been in play since May. Maybe this could be the beginning of the market uh, retesting uh, the, the, the lows of, era, of early June. So if markets are all moving in tandem with each other, you can be more confident that that move is going to continue, regardless of whether the move is to the upside or the downside. So if the market does manage to turn a bit lower on the S&P 500, Support could be found from this yellow line here, the 100 day moving average, which comes into play in uh, 2,827. Um, 2,800, big psychological number. Um, that, act, that area was, was in reaching for support on a few occasions in the last few uh, weeks and months, and also resistance. And even and, and uh, even if it dro drops below that, uh, the 100 day, the 200 day moving average at 2,771 might act as support. It's only really if you take take out the, uh, the 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 lows of early June, because then we because then we become become concerned, and then actually that could be a sign that we're actually looking to actually kind of move lower, and we could be looking heading back down towards the two thousand seven hundred mark. 
take a look now at what's going on in gold so gold has had a quite a decent run recently but we are seeing a bit of some signs of some faltering so we if you look at the gold market in recent um in recent weeks since late may we've had a major rally from late may uh only last only on friday we hit a level not seen on the gold market since april 2018 so we're talking um well over a, a year's high we're talking about a 14 month high um on, on the gold market very impressive run on, on the gold market but we can see here um by looking at the price action this long um this long wick here in the candle um denotes indecision and if you take it if, if we have a major rally a very you know huge move to the upside and then we have a, a bit of indecision that could be a sign maybe the rally that's that necessarily is coming coming to a complete end it might just continue to push higher but at a slower pace so we could see the gold market give back some of the ground that it has gained in the last few weeks and once again we're lower on the day today on the day again so we could drift a bit lower again uh, we could head back down towards kind of 1324 1320 uh, and then even if we have a more sizable uh, correction we could be looking heading back down towards kind of 1310 1300 but Keep in mind, if you look at the price action since August last year, the big picture has been that gold has been has been pressing higher. Um, so if you do manage to kind of take off the recent highs of it around kind of 13.58, we could be looking at targeting this area here at 13.66 there thereabouts. Uh, levels not seen uh, once again since April uh, last year and also January 2018. So keep an eye out for 13.66 should we continue the kind of the wider upper trend. I'll take a look what's going on now in uh, the oil market. Oil has had a similar move to equities. Um, you know, look at late December uh, until late April on the Brent crude oil market and a major rally. But since then, we've had a fairly sizable move to the downside. Now, we appear for the time being to have found a bit of a floor in around here, even though the, kind of the near term view still remains negative. But if we can hold above these recent lows, we could see the market um, manage to get a, regain a bit of ground, head back up towards this area here, potentially in around kind of $65 a barrel. And it's only really if you kind of retake the 30 moving average, which comes into play at 68 spot 14, because then we become more confident that the recent move uh, since April, that, that negative move has come to an end and the wider upper trend is going to continue. If you do manage to press on lower from here, keep an eye for $60 a barrel. That's a big psychological number. And on a few occasions at the beginning of the year, we saw, we saw some consolidation in that region. And if you drop below that, keep an eye for this region here in around the kind of 57 spot 50. You know, similar situation at the back end of last year. Um, it did act, uh, we saw some consolidation in around that region. Uh, test to take a look now at what's going on on WTI. The price action looks similar to Brent, provided with a sizable rally between late December up until um, late April, and then that's when the kind of market started started to uh, to, tr to turn lower. Very similar situation, whereby the more recent term move is clearly bearish, but in around the kind of low kind of fifty, you know, just below fifty one dollars a barrel, that does appear to be some support in that area. Now I know we are edging lower, so. If you can hold above the recent lows, you know, there's a possibility that we might manage to kind of try and retake uh, the recent high in at 54, about 75. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking up heading towards the kind of $57 region or perhaps up as high as the, uh, the kind of, say, 60 barrel per, per dollar per barrel, 60 bucks per barrel area. If you take off the recent lows, keep an eye for this area here in uh, just above $50 a barrel, 50 spot 36. Uh, any moves below that could take us back down towards 48 or perhaps even this region here in at 47. Uh, have a look now what's going on in the currency markets. So even though we did see a bit of a surge in the euro not too long ago, given the uh, Mario Draghi's of the ECB's update wasn't as bullish, or wasn't as, bare, as dovish as uh, traders had hoped, we saw a decent move um, in the, uh, in the in the first week in June, but the market does appear to be turning over on itself yet again, and the wider negative trend that it's been in for a number of months now does appear to have have resumed. Um, if we do manage to kind of break below the kind of one spot twelve area, we could be looking at targeting this region down here in around one spot eleven ten, 
and a break below that could take us down to the kind of psychologically important one spot ten region. If the recent you kind know, of push higher that we saw here um, is to kind of kind of press on, we need to be kind of retaken up. We need to be kind of taken off the recent highs here in at uh, one spot thirteen forty seven, and then to be honest, really. You'd really need to be kind of honestly taken out kind of 114 and particularly the uh, the mid may high of one spot 1448 before we be, before we become more confident at the kind of wider you know, trend for the recent months the negative trend has come to an end and we are kind of snapping higher take a look now what's going on on the pound versus the us dollar So the pound versus the US dollar has been in a fairly consistent negative trend uh, since early May. We can see here that for a fairly sizable sell-off um, between early May and, uh, and, and late May, the market did manage to kind of pull back some of the ground, but it appears that the, 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 uh, the market is turning over itself yet again. We're not too far away from the recent lows. If you do break, take, take off this area here, this low here, that, that would be quite bearish. We'll be back to kind of printing multi-month lows. Uh, we could be looking at retesting this area here in a one spot 2476. Any moves to the upside, um, we need to kind of take could run into in resistance in around this region here in around one spot 2762. But we need to be, you know, at the very least, kind of taking off the kind of 128 region here um, before we could potentially look to head back up towards 132. Oh, sorry, back up to, towards 130, the big psychological number of 130. And I also want to talk about Bitcoin. Um, there was some news out that the that Facebook are considering um, launching their own cryptocurrency. And if a kind of a, a titan of the tech industry, such as Facebook, are considering getting involved in cryptocurrencies, that kind of adds credibility and respectability to the wider sector. So we have seen a decent move higher in Bitcoin uh, today, and also actually in, in the last few weeks as a whole. So you can take a look at the price action of Bitcoin. So the wider view, obviously, the kind of all-time high that was achieved in December 2019, we had a terrible year in 2018, and in true kind of fashion, we spent quite a, quite a few months in the doldrums and kind of low volatility. But in the last few weeks and months, especially since, since late April, we've had a move to the upside. We can see here that the market managed to, on a few occasions, in, early, in late April, close above the two-day moving average, which is you know, often seen as a kind of barometer for you know, being, a market being bullish or being bearish. And once it, it closed above that, it drifted back down towards the two-day moving average, and quite frankly, since then, it's been in a fairly impressive up move, uh, solid move uh, to the upside. Um, we've hit a level today not seen since uh, May last year, so we're talking about a 13-month high on Bitcoin. Which when you see kind of headlines saying multi-year multi highs or a multi-month highs, it kind of often adds to the to the, uh, the bullish move. If you can continue to press on higher from here, and we're currently in around 9,300, the next big psychological number to, to look out for on the upside will be uh, 10,000. Uh, and then of course if you go beyond 10,000, we could then be looking towards this region here um, in around the um, 11,000 to kind of 750 mark uh, up around here. If you do see a move to the downside of Bitcoin, uh, support can be found from this region here in around 8,000. Support, did, we did see some, uh, some we call consolidation in that region. And then, and, then more, and then also in around this area here in around 7,471. Uh, let's take a look now at some of the big events of the week ahead. Uh, the week ahead can be found on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com under news and analysis, uh, that, that's a section where a good portion of the updates for South and other analysts right um, place our content, but some of it's also on the inside section of the trading platform. Um, scrolling down, um, starting off uh, to, uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, the leader of the Conservative Party here in the UK, the, the, the leadership contest is going to kick off. We're going to have a, have a live televised debate that could potentially see volatility in the, um, in the British pound on the back of that. Uh, turning our attention to Wednesday, the, the Federal Reserve has an interest rate decision. Um, like I said earlier on the video, there's been a lot of talk that we're going to have rate cuts uh, from the Federal Reserve this year. If the Federal Reserve 
look to be far more neutral and, and less dovish than the market are expecting, we could see a, 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 a bit of a pullback in uh, those stock markets. So keep an eye out for the 50 day moving average on the, on the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, the DAX and the FTSE 100 because they're all pretty much just hovering above it for the time being. But we could see a possibility of, of, of a, um, a move to the downside if the Fed aren't as dovish as the markets are, are pricing in. Keeping in mind, US employment is at a 50 year low. Wage growth is comfortably above the inflation rate, and the most recent retail sales figures from the U.S. suggest U.S. consumers are happy to spend. Uh, so there's some concerns that the, the dovishness of the Fed has been already kind of overpriced into the markets. Uh, conversely, if the, mar if the Fed appear to be quite dovish, we could see a jolt on higher, and that 50-day moving average might just act as kind of a, a platform before the next move to the upside in global stocks. Uh, Wednesday, we also have UK CPI. Keep an eye out for sturdy volatility on the back of that. On Wednesday, we have um, full year figures from Barclay Group, the home developer. Uh, this week, we have the Slack IPO. On Thursday, we have the Bank of England interest rate decision. Uh, we have the Bank of Japan interest rate decision on Thursday as well. Uh, um, Darden Restaurants, fourth quarter results over in the US. Uh, what we have is we have Kruger. Uh, Kroger rather over in the US have quarterly updates on Thursday and on Friday we have um, the flash PMI results from Germany and France and any kind of signs of slowing slowing, uh, slowing economies of Germany and France could put pressure on the euro. Um, finally, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Good Reviews. Thank you very much.